It's one thing to dream, and it's another to do the things that will make your, you know, put yourself in situations and do the things that will make your dreams to be, you know, to come true. Um, I remember in my graphic arts class, we were given an assignment on typography. And the title was, if you want your dreams to come true, wake up. <laughs> so that just sort of stuck in my head. You can't continue to just lay there and keep dreaming. You have to wake up and be practical and do something about it. And that means, as an artist, that means I had to find a way to let people see what I'm doing, um, find a way to get my art into people's, you know, get people's attention, I'll advertise it and things like that. Today you have, um, the opportunities are much more wider for artists and people who want to see, let people see. There's social media um, that I tell some of my friends, or uh, some young people like you, if you have something that you're doing and you like it, put it out there. Social media should not be for, it should not be for where you post your selfies and so on. It should be for how you, you create a platform to advertise what it is that you want to do. And then the whole world sees it, and you know, it eventually it, it, it works out. Um, so today I have my works, thank you. I have my works in important museums in different parts of the world. I have my works in, in important collections. And uh, even at that, I continue to work at it. Because there's always one more step to success. And I would tell you that it did not come in a platter of gold. It's a lot of hard work, especially if you, when I moved from Nigeria to the United States, it's a really big market. It's very competitive. Yes. Staying the course meant that, you know, was mainly because I enjoyed what I was doing. Um, I wake up thinking as an artist. If, that, if I didn't enjoy what I was doing, maybe I would have been discouraged. The challenges really were, yes, the, way it is, the inconveniences of not just having enough money. So I had to just adjust my lifestyle to fit how, what to fit my income. I did not have a car when I was here, and I didn't see the need to go, my first painting to go buy a car just so that it feels like I have a car when I know that the car comes with the cost of maintenance. So, um, so I continue to just build on, on things that were of substance, that, that, that were important, and not appearances. And those are so how I was able to just try and live within my means and, uh, and do what I needed to do to get to you know, what I wanted. Talking about going, when I, I stepped out of Nigerian shores and became a minority in a different place. Um, yes, there was that challenge of going to a new place. First of all, you don't know anybody and you're just trying to break in, in spite of the opportunities that are bound. So I decided not to, first of all, look at what the limitations would be, but what the opportunities mm -hmm. are available. And my, I felt that my art was the key to that. So I was more concentrated on letting people see my work and then they like it, and that becomes the key to open that door. Um, I didn't sit down and say, well, they would not accept somebody like me. I believed in the philosophy of putting your foot in the door and let them tell you to get out or not. So most of the times it's been, you're welcome. So it's not to sit back and say, oh, um, those people don't look like me. You've already removed yourself from the situation before you even get there, or before anybody even tells you anything. So that's how I used to overcome those situations. And it doesn't mean that there's still no issues with people who have issues with people who look like me or look like you. There, are people, there will always be people like that. But that should not stop you know, one's dream.